world, welcome back to another tutorial. Today, we're gonna be talking about multiple render passes. So I'm gonna give you the ability to create as many render passes as you want. This comes in real handy when you wanna do something like shadow mapping, where in the first render pass, you render to the depth map. In the second render pass, you actually do a scene render with that depth map in mind. And then in a final render pass, you might render to the view. Now, if you haven't seen the last episode on MTL render pass descriptors, go watch that. That's kind of a precursor. That's gonna give you a lot more information on exactly how all this kind of works. So let's get into it. So what we currently have set up is a first render pass. What I mean by first render pass is that we have a scene that is getting rendered during this entire first pass. We have tents and trees. Those tents and trees are going into a basic vertex shader and a basic fragment shader. However, what we set up in the last episode is instead of rendering to the views drawable texture, we are creating our own custom render pass descriptor and rendering to multiple color targets. Then with our basic vertex shader, each mesh gets its own model matrix. The model matrix converts it into world space. Then we also pass in a view matrix, which converts it to view space. And then we pass in the projection matrix to convert it to screen space. Screen space is of bounds negative one to positive one. That's basically converting the vertices down so they shrink to view on your screen. And then we take the output of these vertices, pass them into a basic fragment shader, which then colors in those vertices, and we get our three output textures that we're rendering to. And those are just kind of in memory. We're not rendering those to the view. We're not doing anything with them. They're just there for our use now. And so what we ended up doing in the, at the end of the last episode is we're just copying the top texture to the views drawable texture. And what that looks like is we have the views drawable texture, which has a width and a height. And we have that top image and we blit copy, which is just a one-to-one -one copy from the texture onto the views drawable texture. And then we render that to the view. Actually, that's like once we copy it over to the views drawable texture, that gets rendered onto the view. Now, what you'll note is the width and the height of each one of these textures is exactly the same. Now, there seems to be a bug that when you resize the screen, everything, all, all hell breaks loose and it bugs out. And the reason I think that's happening is because say we expand the view a little bit bigger so that the width and the height are a different dimension than the actual texture itself. Well, it's a one-to-one -one copy, I think, and you can't do that you, uh, because there's not like a sampler that kind of linearly samples to figure out, uh, you know, pixels side by side. It's just a one-to-one -one copy. And so it fails. It says these have to be exactly the same width and height, which is, you know, a bummer. But that's okay because we have a solution. Instead of copying to the views drawable texture, we're going to render to the views drawable texture doing our second render pass or our final render pass. And what that looks like is this. Instead of a scene, we do not need to render our entire scene again. That has been rendered to a texture. All we need is a quad. We just need to render a quad. And why do we need to render a quad? Because that already lives in screen space from negative one to positive one. Now this second render pass is gonna be very familiar. It's gonna look exactly like the first render pass. However, instead of using a custom render pass descriptor, we're gonna go back to using the views render pass descriptor. And that's because that's automatically gonna render to the view for us during this render pass. Now, when we do the final vertex shader, we're just gonna be passing the position straight through. We're not gonna be doing any model matrix, view matrix projection. We're just gonna pass the vertices straight through into the final fragment shader where we have already sent our texture. That's right, the texture from the very first render pass will be set inside of the final fragment shader for this render, which once this output should go directly to our view. So the second render pass is really just rendering to the views drawable texture like we were doing before. So enough chatting, let's get into it. Hey guys, this is Tui from the future. Um, I just ran into an issue. I upgraded to Monterey and it seemed to have broken some stuff. Um, apparently this line right here where we're setting the base color text and the normal map text and then we're just kind of setting that fragment texture um, these now need to be wrapped with if this does not equal nil then do that before what i think was happening was if this texture was nil it would just kind of ignore that but now it's actually setting a nil texture so I'm not sure if that's broken or fixed pretty sure it's just now breaking our engine. So there's probably a lot of code in the past. It's a little broken. If you find it, let me know. I need to go in and fix it. But yeah, this is now 
uh, apply this apply textures function in mesh library now it needs these to wrap it let's get on with the other stuff all right let's kick start this inside the renderer.swift where we scroll all the way to the bottom and we're doing our blit copy um, I'm just gonna comment that out. In fact, I'm just gonna delete it because we're not gonna do it anymore. If I were to run this right now, we're gonna get a black view. However, we're still rendering to those textures set up in this base render pass descriptor right here. And uh, yeah, so that's still happening. The textures are still getting created. We're just not rendering to the view yet. So to get this kicked off, I'm gonna do a little bit of refactor. I'm gonna say funk, and I'm just gonna call this the base render pass. And I'm gonna take in a command buffer, which is the MTL command buffer. And I'm gonna take all of this stuff right here and I'm gonna throw it inside that base render pass. That's because this right here is just the base render pass. And we're gonna need that command buffer in order to do it. Now there's gonna be an error, so we'll need to remove that question mark. And honestly, I kind of want to rename this. I'm just going to refactor the render command encoder to be, instead of scene render command encoder, let's just call it the render command encoder because the function kind of already tells us what it is. And we're just going to rename this to, instead of scene render, we're going to call this the base render command encoder. And we're going to start the base render. And there you have it. We're pretty much back to normal with our first render pass. This is the first render pass. And I know you're thinking it, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna create another funk right here called final render pass. So this is gonna be the second render pass that we do. So we're gonna do it just like before, where we say command buffer, MTL command buffer. And we have our final render pass. So what I will do is right after our base render pass, order matters, we're gonna do our base render pass, which creates the texture. And then we'll do our final render pass, which uses that texture to render it to the view. Now, like in the little keynote thing that I did before, I told you that we're gonna need to use the view's current render pass descriptor. So another parameter we're gonna need here is the view itself. So we're gonna call MTK view right here. And let's just go ahead and pass that in right here as the view. Now, like I said before, the render passes are gonna be very similar, but different. So I'm just gonna take all of this and copy it right there. Instead of using the base render pass descriptor when we create the render command encoder, I'm gonna use the view.current render pass descriptor like we were a long time ago. This will instead say final render command encoder and we'll say the final render. You can name these whatever you want, by the way. You don't necessarily have to name them what I'm naming them. This is just so that you understand what I'm doing. You could put these in some sort of a library themselves and add render passes to libraries if you want. Uh, but in this case, this is just to teach you, name this whatever you want. Now, we don't want to render the entire scene, again, because we definitely don't want to do that. What we want to do instead is we want to say render command encoder dot set render pipeline state. And we're going to grab that from graphics dot render pipeline states. And we haven't actually created it yet, but I'm going to create one called dot final. We're gonna to need to implement that, but this is just to show you that this is how we're doing our render pass. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say render command encoder dot set fragment texture. We're gonna grab that from our assets dot, oh, uh, assets dot textures at dot base color render. We'll, we'll do that one first. And at index zero, so the zeroth index, we're just gonna set it to the output texture from our first render pass. And then, like I said, we need a quad to draw to the screen. So let's just say assets.meshes.quad.drawPrimitives render command encoder. And that's it. We haven't implemented our final render pipeline state yet, but this is all we need for our final render pass. Let's go ahead and create this render pipeline state. So over in graphics, uh, we have render pipeline states right here. I'm gonna go straight to the top and I'm gonna create another case called final because that's what I just called it. I'm gonna copy this line right here and I'm gonna paste it right underneath and I'm gonna say final render pipeline state for the case of dot final. I'm gonna scroll to the bottom. Actually, I'm gonna first copy the basic render pipeline state right here. I'm gonna to go to the bottom, I'm gonna paste it, and then I will call this the final render pipeline state. I'm gonna do a little bit of renaming here, and that's it. 
Uh, we'll go through each one of these. So we definitely need a color, need a color attachment at zero. That's the views render attachment. Um, we do not need a sec uh, the second color attachment. And we also don't need a depth attachment because we're just rendering a quad to the screen. So there doesn't need to be a depth attachment at all. Uh, vertex descriptor will keep that exactly the same because when we're doing quad.draw primitives, it's using this vertex descriptor. And then we need a vertex function and a fragment function. Well, I haven't created those, but let's go ahead and fill this in with final vertex and final fragment. And that should... Uh, compile nicely once we've implemented them. So let's jump over to the shader library and add those. So I'm gonna add another one here, case final vertex, case final fragment. I'm gonna copy this line right here, paste it. We're gonna call it the final vertex shader. Very clever name, final vertex. And then I'm gonna copy this line, paste it right here. This will be the final fragment shader and the final fragment. Now, the only thing we have to do is implement two very simple, 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 simple shaders. I promise you, they're gonna be really simple. Other than that, this is gonna work just fine. Let's go ahead and implement the shaders now. So let's go into shaders. I'm gonna create a new file here and I'm just gonna call this, it'll be a metal file and I'm gonna call it final shaders. I'm gonna delete this stuff at the top. I'm gonna to go right here and I'm gonna say include shared.metal just to get the vertex information. I'm gonna create a vertex shader and then right underneath, I'm gonna do a fragment shader. So the vertex shader is going to return a custom struct. So I'm gonna create a struct here and I'm gonna call this the final uh, rasterizer data. And that will output from the vertex shader a float four, which is a position. Make sure you use the position attribute and the last thing is just the texture coordinate. So texture coordinate. The reason I'm going so fast through this, by the way, is because we've done this before. But uh, you know, just gonna just gonna keep going. So vertex final rasterizer data. Let's just go check what that name was. It was final vertex shader. So I'm just gonna copy that, put that right there, and we have our final vertex shader. This will return an RD, just like so. And we need to take in a const vertex in, we'll say V in at stage in because we're using the vertex descriptor. For the rasterizer data output, we will simply just say rd.position equals a float for, uh, what do we have? V in dot position 1.0, easy, pass through. Like I said, we're gonna send it straight through because it's already in screen space. And then we also need to say rd.texture coordinate equals the float two of vn.texture coordinate. And on to our fragment shader. So just like before, we're gonna return a half four. I believe I called this the final fragment shader. Just to make sure I'm gonna go to the shader library. We're gonna look, it's the final fragment shader. I'll actually just copy it and come paste it. That's probably the smart thing to do. Um, that's going to take in the const uh, final rasterizer data as the first parameter. We're going to call that rd. That's also going to be a stage in. And we also need one more thing here, and that is a texture 2d. We're going to have that of type float. And I'm just going to call this the base texture. So this is going to be the output from the first render pass. That's the output texture from the first render pass that we're gonna pass in right here. And I'll just put that at texture zero because that's what we did over in our renderer. So basically wherever we said set the fragment texture right there at index zero, that's what I'm doing right now. This is the texture at index zero. Now I can just say float for color equals, well, I need a sampler. So what you can do is you can create your own sampler inside of our sampler state library. 
I'm not gonna do that because we just need a simple sampler. So I'm gonna just say sampler S. You can do this as well. You can either pass one in or create one. You can also set properties on samplers just like this as well. Um, and then the float is going to be the base texture dot sample S and then we need a texture coordinate. Now, right here, I'm gonna go ahead first and say float to texture coordinate equals RD dot texture coordinate. And I'm gonna use that right here because we're gonna change it in just a second because of some I'm lazy. <laughs> and then we're just gonna return half four color right there. And there is our final fragment shader. There's one more line of code that we're gonna do in just a second. I just wanna show you it first. Um, but that's our, that's it. Look at how easy those are. Super simple vertex shader and fragment shader. Just gonna pass a quad through and color it. Now that everything's in place, I'm just gonna hit play here and I'm gonna watch this break because we haven't done one more step. Now it's gonna jump to here and it's basically gonna say that for the depth attachment, this pixel format does not match that pixel format. And the reason is we have inside of our render pipeline state library, we have said there is no depth descriptor. And how you disable that on the view is by going to the game view and just commenting out the depth stencil pixel format line. Now it doesn't have a depth attachment. So now none, which is none, doesn't match the views none. So if I press play, we should see some cool output. And there's our freaking scene, except it's upside down. And I believe it's because our texture coordinates might be flipped. That's not that big of a deal. What we can do is we can go back into our final shaders and we need to just flip the Y coordinate. It was upside down, so we just need to invert the texture coordinate. So right here, I will say texture coordinate dot Y equals. Now, if we wanna flip it, we just do one minus the texture coordinate, oh, coordinate dot Y. So if the texture coordinate's currently zero, it's gonna be one minus zero, which is one. And if it's at one, it's gonna be one minus one, which is zero. So it's just gonna invert, it's just gonna flip the Y. And if I press play, we should now see our scene back being rendered to the view. And it has, it doesn't freak out anymore about the sizing. We can resize it and all that jazz. We aren't updating the aspect ratio uh, every single frame. That's an issue. Uh, you can actually fix that by going into our game shiz, going to cameras, going to debug camera. And every time we do update, you also want to do the projection matrix setting. Now, we're probably gonna set up an event queue to resolve this because I just don't think this uh, is a good solution. This is kind of expensive and we don't wanna have to do that every single frame. But now I believe that, uh, yeah, it's gonna update every single time and it's actually gonna use that uh, aspect ratio that it's currently at. So instead of doing that, we're gonna put it back to normal. That's just how you fix that small bug where everything gets squished. Now to show you that this is really, really cool, since we are just rendering to the view inside of a shader, we can pass any texture we want. So if I go back here to the renderer and where we're setting that fragment texture, let's say we do the depth render. So in the first pass, we do that depth render Let's just render that to the view. And it looks like this. Now it's all messed up. Um, that's because I did not do this. So uh, just like these textures, so I'm gonna go up here to this function, create base pass, render pass descriptor. And when we're creating these textures, we're not doing a store action and load action for the pass, the depth attachment. So let's go here and I'm just gonna copy those. I'm gonna copy depth attachment right here and just paste that right there and paste that right there. Now it should clear and it shouldn't freak out. Oh, it's all red. However, it's not really red. If you go down to the ground, you'll see that there is depth. This is the depth. Uh, it's in this like red channel. Um, you know, it, it's a little blurry, but if we were to actually go into the rendering of it, the scene, uh, you'll notice that the first render pass actually renders it nicely. So this is what it actually looks like. Um, but when we do it this way, it's just kind of, it's really hard to see. But I mean, look at this. We create a command buffer. That command buffer is used to create both the render command encoder for the base and the final pass. And in the last pass, we don't even have a depth rendering. And in the first pass, we do all three of those. 
pretty freaking cool. I'm gonna set this back to just rendering that regular texture. So I'm gonna go to the final render and I'll just do this as the base color render, save it, and we should be good. Hell yes, our scene looks awesome. Just so you guys know, now after this video is over, you should be able to go in and create intermediary passes. So if you wanted another pass right here, you do the same thing and then simply just go pass and pass in the command buffer or whatever. And it will also do some rendering. So if you wanna do some more rendering to different textures, just create another render pass descriptor and go render some different targets, do some fun stuff, do some shadow mapping, do all sorts of blah, blah. Just have fun with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a comment, leave a like, do whatever you want. Uh, yeah, see you next time.